Hello and welcome to the Cisco CyberOps Associate Lab video series. I'm going to be walking through each of the major labs of the Cisco CyberOps Associate Netacad curriculum. So let's go and let's jump on in. All right, in this video, we're looking at Lab 3312, Windows Task Manager. So let's jump into our VM and let's explore Task Manager. So before I do that, I do want to point out that we are working through the Netacad lab. Here are the instructions. We have three main tasks. We have the process tab, the service tab, the performance tab. And we're just going to be working through the lab outlined by Cisco's Netacad. So I'm going to have this off screen and I'm just going to be working top to the bottom. All right, so the lab calls for us to open up a web browser and a command terminal. So we have both applications running, and I'm going to go ahead and open up Task Manager. I'm going to minimize the web browser and the command terminal. You're going to notice if we hit the little carrot next to Edge, we have multiple sub-processes, and we have a tab. If we're looking at our web browser, go to Google, for example. This tab is this application right here. This is what is using most of it. Our command prompt has just a single application underneath it, because that's how the program is written. And I'm using 100% of my processing power while it tries to do a update for the malicious removal tool. So I'm going to pause for this scan to finish and then we'll go ahead and pick back up. Alright, so you may open up Task Manager and you may just have this view. And if you do, that's not a big deal. If you click on more detail, you can see uh, the extended view. You can also see that the way that our task manager is broken up is we have user apps, background processes, and as you scroll down, Windows processes, and these are all the different Windows services, and that is it. So those are the three main categories that applications fall into. The background processes are uh, executed in the background, the services are in the background. The time that it takes you to scroll through, you should notice that there are certain processes that may not even need to be functional. So here we have apps that we have running, Edge for example, but we also have in the background process Edge and a Edge update as well as the store, OneDrive, and so forth. So if we right click our, it wants us to go ahead and find a Windows process for our console window. That's our command terminal. If we right click on it, we can click on properties we can see where the location is we can see the security and the details and if there's any uh, previous versions we can see that this is the con host application .exe located in that directory if we right click on it again we can also see the go to details that loads the details portion Too far down. We can also right click open file location and that takes you directly to the command that's running. And we can also search online if we want to. So if we close the command terminal, you'll see that that application now closes. It's, it's just gone. All right, so we can sort our task manager by 
clicking on the headers. So here we have CPU. We can have them rank greatest to least. One click should be greatest. One more click will be the least at the very top. Same thing with memory. Same thing with disk. Same thing with network. Same thing with power usage. And power trends. If you want to see what is heavily using your hard drive, for example, you could actually sort it based off of the hard drive location, and that would let you know what resources are using them. So if we uh, right click on the memory header, we can then select other options. So we can do a resource value, we can say memory and percent instead. So of this memory usage, which application is using the most memory? And now it's sorted by memory percentage. You can uh, see kind of what is using the, the most amount of memory uh, percent wise as opposed to uh, in megabytes. It just kind of depends on how you're wanting to look at this. So value we are running how much memory are we running right now so we have four gigs 2.9 are being used and of that this is using 185 megabytes this is using 173 megabytes if we want to see it in via in perspective of percentage that's where that could be useful we can also sort them by name sorting them by name We'll sort them by the application, background processes, and our system. If we double click on Edge, you'll notice it doesn't do anything other than allows us to drill down into it. If we want to end our Edge, let's say Edge is freaking out and we don't want it to stay open if we go to the parent and we end task it will close the current tab and it may take a few seconds but it will close the application as well so that completes part one which is looking at task manager so now that we're kind of at least understanding the process tab let's look at the other tabs we have our performance tab our performance tab are going to be listing our CPU, our memory, our disk, our network connectivity. And you'll notice that my memory, or my, my processor is running at about 100% until a few minutes ago. Now it dropped down to, to less than half. But you have a graphical chart showing that. Memory has been about consistent. You can also see what's in use, what's committed, if there's paging, what's available. So there's details here. So with the processor, we can see that it is using 100% utilization, running at 4 gigahertz. There are 166 processes, just under 2,000 threads. It's a single socket with two virtual CPUs. I am using VMware Workstation to virtualize this machine, and this is my processor type. It's an i7-6700K CPU running at 4 GHz. If I probably modify my socket, I could probably get a little bit better performance, but for just this review, not that big of a deal. So now let's look at memory. What is the total physical memory? Well, we can see it will say total physical memory, 4 gigs. It will also say up here. What is the available physical memory? So, in use is 2.2. Uh, available is 1.8. Makes up the 4 gigs. How much physical memory is being used by the computer? It is using, right now, 2.1 gigs. So as we scroll down, we can look at disk utilization. It is on an SSD. So we can see write time, response time, read times, all of those details down here. 
For our Ethernet, we can look at sending and receiving. So what is our link speed? Our link speed happens to show it is a gigabit network connection. It doesn't specifically say the link speed. It will just show you kind of the name of the adapter, the type of adapter. And based off of the chart, it right now is showing between 0 and 100 kps, kilobits per second. If we need to uh, send mass amounts of data, this graph will scale based off of the requirements. So we also have our IPv4 and IPv6 information towards the bottom. Those are pretty common private addresses. So 192.168.50, that is the default network range for VMware Workstation, and FE80 is a link local address, so that's all pretty common. All right, so after that, we can look at the resource manager or resource monitor. So down here we have our open resource monitor, slightly different view of our resources. But you'll notice CPU, disk, network, and memory. And we can drill down into each one and we can see process ID, the threads, the average, the status, what's running. And we can look at what's going on. And we can see for disk, if one disk application is reading or writing more data than the others, we can see IO response. Same thing with our network connectivity. We can see what's sending, what's receiving, as well as memory, what's being committed, what's working, what's shared, what's in private areas. So what I want to do is I want to look at network on both of these tabs. I'm going to open up a command prompt. So ping google.com attack L I want to send large amounts of data to Google but I want to do it continuously and you'll notice I had the initial spike and then that was it nice thing is I am sending about 8 kbs through my network adapter so that's where our line is in our network command prompt you can see our spike if we go to our processor we can bring up our command terminal Memory consumption, search, nope. Look in, look in, look in. It's not a PowerShell command. All right, I'm going to do this the easier way. I'm going to go to details. The command prompt is 1408. And here it is. And you'll notice it's not really using a lot of processing power. It doesn't need that much processing power to send an ICMP message. Oh, it decided to shut down for some reason. All right, so that was funny. Uh, I hit a shutdown now key on my keyboard, so it decided to, to kill my session. We're actually done with the lab. The lab had one reflection question. Why is it important for the administrator to understand how to work within Task Manager? And there's a lot of reasons. Understanding the applications, the resource utilization, things like that, that matters. But you can also see resource utilization. You can see what applications are running what, which resources are using the most amount of power, what's using the most amount of resources, processor, memory, disk, happens that it is installing an update. So right now it's using the most amount of resources. If I want to kill that 
I can free up some resources. So we talked about processes, we talked about performance. Here's our startup where you can actually disable things from starting up. Like, I don't want Microsoft Edge starting up. So I can right click, disable. I don't want OneDrive starting up. Right click, disable. I don't want security notifications. Right click, disable. That way I can minimize what's starting. And then there's also an impact on startup that hasn't been measured, but you could uh, measure them to see how much time you could save. Users are going to be how many users and what they're doing and what specific tasks they're running underneath their profile. We also have details. That's going to be the specific detailed processes that are running. Starting with system idle, system idle loads the system, and from there, our system loads all of the other PIDs. The interesting thing is we have PID, and you can actually add in an, an additional add on that will do a parent PID or a PPID. And the PPIDs are basically what process called them or which process created them. And oftentimes the system is the parent PID and the system calls all of the other PIDs. That's how the operating system works. And then we also have our services and any services that are running the appropriate PIDs that are tied to them. This is outside the scope of this lab, but I did want to make sure that we kind of went through all of task manager, not just the bare minimum. So again, this is lab 3312, Windows Task Manager at a very basic level. And that is all I had for this lab. Questions or concerns, definitely feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right, so that does it for this lab video. A few suggestions would be, one, run through the lab a second time, trying to do it by yourself. Two, I would do a summary of kind of what you learned, where you struggled, and keep that type of journal going so that you can build off of it. Third, and finally, take time to reflect. These labs start off fairly easy and then they grow in complexity, so some of the labs you may have to redo a few times to fully grasp what's going on. If you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.